Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a sketchbook tour. I thought it would be fun to just go through and uh, tell you guys about my journey through the sketchbook and just kind of make some comments on the pages that I wanted to explain a little further. Um, but if you don't want to watch this long version, there is a short version and I'll link it at the end of the video and down in the description. Let's just get right into it. I'm really excited and let's just start touring my sketchbook. So to start off, we have a bunch of stickers and stuff on here. Um, this is from a scholar box that I did. This was a random sticker my sister got me, this one as well. And this one, this was from Amazon. I have no idea why, but they sent me stickers from like a magazine or something. And I thought it was kind of cute. So this one goes with that and that one goes with that. This is a sticker by Gel Arts, who I really admire her artwork and her art style. And then um, this is my brother's favorite car and I thought it would just look cool so I just put it on the front here. But yeah, let's get into the actual sketchbook of the things I actually made. I started this sketchbook in March of 2023 and finished it um, this January. So I'm really excited that I got it done in nine months because that was a big goal of mine was to finish a sketchbook in under a year so. Here's the first sketchbook page. I had a lot of fun with this one. I liked the colors. I used um, the IKEA uh, watercolor pencils and I was very pleasantly surprised with them because they were really, really cheap and really affordable and I thought they were really fun to use. And they have really vibrant colors. This is the page where I tested them all out and I made some little thumbnail ideas of what I would try. This is the one I ended up going with. I actually like the thumbnail sketch a little better. It looks a little more loose and free to me than this one, but that's okay. Um, and I had some cute ideas here and I might revisit them one day. On the next page, I brought my sketchbook out and did some urban sketchbooking um, and just kind of drew some things I saw. I saw this cute little brick building and these are the same pencils that I used for the previous illustration. I really liked the colors so I thought I'd just bring them with me one day when I went out to sketch and just experiment with them a little more. So I just have some little doodles. Um, I wasn't too happy with the squirrel, but not everything has to look amazing. And then here we have a little Zentangly cat. This is also done with the pencils. I really liked how this was turning out and then I accidentally ruined the eyes because I just kind of kept doing more and more line art. It doesn't look bad, but I think I did overdo it a little bit. And I know there's nothing in the middle here, but I was kind of just playing around with composition and stuff. And I think I drew all of these plants when I was watching a movie or something. And I had a lot of fun just doodling these because I don't do that a whole lot um, because it's very meticulous and tedious. But um, I did have fun just doing that during a movie. Here, I just had a page where I just wanted to do something freeing and just not anything in particular and just making some lines. I think it turned out looking kind of cool. This is a bunch of thumbnail art and layout ideas for the Creatures Great and Small art challenge I did last year. I followed some of these and didn't follow others. I was just kind of trying to figure out how I would lay each one out and then I pretty much jumped right into it almost immediately after doing this. This page was with Bosca Pen. I was trying to design a minimalist-ish fox design and I have a really hard time drawing foxes. I don't know why. I think it's like their cheeks coming out looking right and then just somehow making their back look like a continuous line there's something about it but I, I was really happy with this and I really like the colors and I just did a couple more doodles and then I gotten some new Copic markers for Christmas and um, I hadn't really used them a whole lot yet so I decided to just play around with some of the pinks and oranges browns that I got so there's just a little badger sketch here so this is just a fun cute little page on this side we've got a bunch of swatches and stuff. I use this page for the entire sketchbook to do random swatches and little things and test throughout. If you're wondering why I have tracing paper here, it's because this sketchbook tends to transfer from page to page and I do double-sided sketchbook pages. So I have a lot of tracing paper in here to stop that from ruining the art on the other pages. But. All right, and then kicking it off, we start day one of the Creatures Great and Small, which was Mouse. Um, I wasn't really sure what direction I was going to take when I started, so I just kind of started where I felt comfortable. This one is very colored pencil heavy. 
I did a watercolor base and then went in with details for colored pencil. Um, I think this one's cute, it's very springy. Um, there's a few things I would change, but overall I, I don't mind it as much. I didn't do these day to day, I just did them when I felt like it. It wasn't like a 30 day challenge, it was just a 30 prompt challenge. Um, and then we have jellyfish for this one. I did this with all watercolor. And one of the things I wanted to do with this challenge was get better at just animals in general and just detailing them with watercolor specifically. This one was a really hard one to start off with. I probably shouldn't have put jellyfish near the front because I had a hard time with the kind of free flowiness of a jellyfish. I think if I'd put it near the end, it probably would have turned out a little better, but you have to learn somehow. So I don't like that I put it in the corner. I, I don't know why I did that, but I did. This one, oh my goodness, I am so proud of this one. I love tiger moths. Funny story, I was working in a restaurant and the way I discovered that tiger moths even exist, I opened a bag of lettuce that I was supposed to cut up and um, there was one of these guys. Just, um, it was dead, but it was beautiful and it was in the lettuce. So I had to throw the whole entire box out of lettuce because you can't use that in the food industry. But I did discover this gorgeous, beautiful moth. I think this one specifically is called a virgin tiger moth. There's a bunch of different types and they all look a little bit different and have different patterns. Correct me if I'm wrong and you know, but I, I think it was a virgin tiger moth specifically, but generally it's just a tiger moth and I absolutely love this. I started out just doing base layers and I was working with layering a little bit on this one and I did use a little bit thicker because it's too paint. So um, I really like the colors I got in this one and I think it's really cool and it pops off of that really kind of simplistic background and I'm really proud of that one. And then last Christmas, um, December 2023, I won a giveaway from Blix 12 Days of Christmas and it was a bunch of Dollar Ronnie supplies. I got a watercolor set, some brushes, and uh, a couple other things. And this was the swatch page I did for all of those watercolors and then just playing around. This is really ugly, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't super matter. And they have very vibrant colors. I was really happy with all of them, especially their yellows. Their range of yellows are just beautiful. So um, I really recommend getting this Dollar Ronnie set. I'll link supplies in the description. We have here a Rhino for the next prompt. Um, this was my first time using that Dollar Ronnie set that I had just gotten and I wanted to go simplistic. Um, I kind of went all over the place in the beginning of this prompt series and by the end of it, I kind of had a rhythm going, but this is a black rhino, which I believe is an endangered species. So I wanted to feature a few endangered animals on this prompt series, just to bring awareness, just because I, I like to know that kind of stuff. I really like how simplistic and cute it is with the little dot eye, but this one was a really fun, cute one, I thought. So it is simple, but it's cute. And then this one here, this is probably one of my favorite ones out of the prompt series. But when I did it, I actually hated it because it felt really out of control and messy. But now that I've kind of done more watercolor, I like that. I don't want it to look perfect and neat and super planned. And I really am happy with this. Again, the cute little dot eye on this one. It's just, I, I absolutely love that. And the little feather details. I just love how muddy and murky this one turned out and the color scheme was really nice. All right, and then we have a Biltmore sketch. I don't know if you guys know about the Biltmore estate, but I went there with my family on a little trip. I hate this sketch, but I was trying to sketch the greenhouse and it is very detailed and I don't usually draw buildings. So I was trying to be merciful with myself when I was doing that. I, I don't really do a lot of in-person sketching. I'm more of the type of artist that sits at my desk and do it, but I want to get better at that. That's one of my goals this year is doing more landscapes and just sketching when I'm out. Um, and then I kind of redeemed this spread with my next prompt here, which was some type of squirrel. I don't know if it was a specific squirrel or just squirrel. Most of it is done in watercolor. And then just for some texture, because it was feeling a little bit bland because the colors were all coming out kind of flat, I went in with color pencil. And I really like how I did the wood on this branch. I actually bring this in a couple of times throughout the series, um, but I, I really liked this one a lot. Moving on, we have a lion here. For this prompt series, I really planned it out. I put some animals that I've already drawn before that I knew I'd be kind of comfortable doing. In between, I put like a bunch of birds, I put mammals, I put ocean creatures and fish and stuff. 
So I tried to space it out in a way where I would do something that I'm comfortable with and then I do something that I'm a little more uncomfortable with and then I do something really hard and then I go back to something a little more comfortable. The lion was honestly one that would scare me but this one turned out way better than I was expecting. Um, I like the background a little bit more on this one as it's a little more visually interesting and I like how there's a cohesive color scheme throughout. Uh, and I, I'm really happy with the lighting and shading that I got on this one. I think it's kind of cool. It is a little bit um, tight. I would have liked to have done it a little more looser, but um, starting out, I think it was okay. And the color pencils were fun to layer for that. And then I have another sketch from Biltmore. I sketched this all in person. And then I did some line art later that day off location. And then a couple weeks later, I decided to color it as I had a reference picture. And I just wanted to keep it really simple. Uh, Biltmore is a lot more detailed than I made this. You know, starting off with doing sketching in person, I'm gonna be patient with myself. Details can come the more that I do it. All right. And then continuing with our Creatures Great and Small prompts, we have an Emperor Penguin. This one was a really simple, easy one that I did. I had no issues with this one. I think this was probably one of the quickest ones I did. Um, and I thought it was very sweet looking. It was really easy to do and with the little textured brushes, brush strokes I had here, it really helped me create that little fuzzy look. And then this one, this one was very challenging. I love sea turtles and um, I wanted to do a really good job on this one. So I don't know if you guys can see it, if it comes through on YouTube or through my camera, but this has so many colors in it. like. Like the transition from just like this part to this part has so many colors and I did a base layer of all blue. So there's like a tone, it's the whole thing's toned so it actually looks like it's underwater. I'm really proud of how this one turned out. And then next we have this really fun inked sketch. This is a tree on my grandparents' property. Um, overlooking the road and um, I'm really proud of how this turned out. I think I got the details without being detailed and I have like all the shading and the texture. This was really fun to do and I want to do more like this. I don't I don't do art that looks like this a lot but I always enjoy it when I do so I think I'm going to try to do a little bit more of that this year. Um, and then we've got the next prompt. I believe this is number 10. I don't remember what we're on anymore. Um, using those bright yellows, trying to keep it a really soft nature thing as the prompt was rabbit or bunny or something, I don't remember. Um, I did bring back the colored pencils for this one. I used a lot of blending. I'm really proud of the soft, fuzzy texture I got for this rabbit. Um, the background needs work, but my main focus for this challenge was the animal, so I didn't try as hard on the background. I wish I did a little bit more, but Overall, I think it's okay to kind of have that blurred texture. Next, we have another one of my favorites. This whole spread is honestly one of my favorites of the prompts that I did. We have an African elephant here. I like the landscape. It's a cool perspective. We've got it kind of simplistic and the colors all go really well together. I love how I did the clouds in the background and the little mountain range. Um, this guy was really fun to do. I love doing all the wrinkles and the shadows and the stuff that was just, it was really fun to do texturally. And I was really proud of how just the face turned out. I thought I, I did a pretty good job. And then on this side, we've got a monarch butterfly. And I like how this one turned out pastel and it feels more delicate looking. And I really liked that cone flower that I did. I thought that turned out pretty cute. And then we have, I believe these are Trump. These are not trumpeter swans, these are mute swans. You'd think I would know after painting all these animals kind of all blurred together at this point. Um, I'm so proud of how these beaks turned out and the white. Painting white creatures is really hard because you don't actually really use a whole lot of white. But yeah, so we have a lot of gray tones, bluish tones, cool tones. I kept it simple and I really liked the composition of this. I think I have a pen on Pinterest of something similar to this and it really inspired me. So I, I love how this one turned out. And then, I love the colors on this one. Um, I really struggled with the angle on this. I really went on that background, like the just the blending of those watercolors and the kind of like rainbowish thing. I love this background so much. 
and just the like little fins, little birds, but I don't like the animals much. I think I did okay on the shading and the highlights, but there was just something about this one that I just couldn't get, and I ended up just deciding to stop and move on because I was really struggling with it, but um, I don't hate it, but I don't love it, so it's not my favorite, um, but not all of them had to be great. One of my favorite reptiles is the armadillo lizard. If you've never heard of it, they are very cool creatures. They roll up into a little um, ball, and they're, they have like all these layered um, scales or spikes, and they are just really cool. You should look them up. Uh, they're usually a little bit more dusty brown toned, so I did take a little bit of artistic liberty with this one, and it's a little more bright color than usual. I didn't mind that just because I liked the color scheme. At the time, I didn't have really small detail brushes, so it would have been extremely meticulous to paint this. Um, so I did end up going back there with pencil. I'm pretty happy with my first attempt at drawing this because reptiles are extremely detailed to draw with all those little scales and stuff. And then we have, I believe, a black-footed ferret over here, which is another endangered species. I think I remember reading about them when I had done this drawing, and I think people thought they were extinct at one point, but then they discovered them somewhere in like one of the Dakotas in the U.S. and discovered that they weren't completely extinct, but I think there's around 300 left um, in the world. Uh, I was getting a little bit better at backgrounds, but still, they're, they're lacking something, so. Again, I want to work on that this year. Oh, yeah, this one was a complete comfort sketch. Like, when I did this, this uh, barn owl 100% did it because it was comfortable for me. I even picked this specific angle so I wouldn't have to worry about a whole lot of feather details. This one turned out looking really detailed without a whole lot of work. Like, I, I really did not spend a whole lot of time on this. And just adding, like, a little bit of a couple of detailed dots just made it really come together. So, this one was a fun fun little project. And then over here, I sketched all of this on a car ride to New Orleans because my family went on another kind of weekend trip later that year in June and we had a good old time there. We went to the World War II Museum and that was incredible. If you're ever there, you guys need to go there. It was a very well done museum, but I did this on the car ride there, just drawing some little silly cats. I do, I do like all the little kind of personalities that these cats have, so. All right, and then we've got the bear over here. I was really proud of this one. Lots of colored pencil. I started off with watercolor, but the layering wasn't going so well, so I just broke out my colored pencils because I have a lot of experience with colored pencils, so they're very familiar and I know how to get what I want with them. My only complaint with this whole thing is I feel like the eyes are a little bit close together. I wish I could move them just the tiniest bit out, but that's kind of nitpicky. Um, and I didn't add any white highlights, so they kind of look like little beady vortexes. <laughs> um, yeah, moving on. We've got the bees over here. These were really fun to do. Again, exploring that kind of rainbowy pastel background just to add a little more visual interest. Not too proud of these flowers, they're okay. Um, but the, the little bees were very fun to do and I had fun with the little wings. Um, I ended up using that jelly roll pen again to get the white on there. Um, yeah. We have another cat page on the side. Uh, these are just some fine liners that I had and I just felt a little sketchy and experimental so I broke those out and just kind of drew whatever I felt like. I started off with a cat and then plants and then I just did some texture stuff on it. So it's not it's not even and super beautiful, but I do like I do like the kind of style and the texturedness of all of the lines. It wasn't for anything other than myself, so I had fun with this one. And then we have my least favorite spread in this entire sketchbook. I hate this page. I wish I could rip it out, but I have a nice sketch on the back, so I can't. And I don't think you should rip pages out of your sketchbook. I think you should leave the good and the bad. It's okay to have bad sketchbook pages, and I'm trying to tell myself that. I'm trying to get better at being okay with not everything in my sketchbook looking really nice. Um, and then we have a turtle on the side as another prompt from the Creatures Great and Small. I don't know what it was about this one, but I just, it was not going well from the very beginning and I just got really frustrated with it. There, there's just a lot of little mistakes in here. I'm not gonna sit here pointing them all out, but it just really bothers me. 
but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Trying to be okay with it. We're moving on. Over here, we've got one of my favorite impressionists, Claude Monet. This is a copycat in watercolor of his The Houses of Parliament at Sunset. I love that painting and I just kind of felt a little bit sketchy with my watercolors that day and so I just kind of did it with the primary colors um, really lightly, loose brush strokes. I had some room on the side so I did a portrait of Monet and then I have a French flag here. I don't know why but I just did. And on this side, we have me experimenting with a tree. Uh, I think the tree is cool. The fox is kind of odd, but oh well. <sighs> and then we have this page. So, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The um, second one had come out. Um, <sighs> so I tried to design my own and I really like this. I like the ponytail. This one's okay. I do not really draw humans a whole lot. I don't really have a whole lot of experience doing that. I can, but it's not my comfort zone. Um, and I, whenever I do, I really have to stretch myself. So uh, this didn't really turn out how I wanted it to. I really like this. This is okay. The hands were okay. I didn't even try on the feet. <laughs> and then this one, I was going to do the complete design over here with an action shot which was a bad idea because I already have a hard time drawing the human figure, so drawing it in action was just a stupid idea, but I tried. As you can see, there is like a bajillion legs over here that are erased and I love the hair and that's it. <laughs> so I put a little failed attempt sad face over here because it just did not go the way I wanted it to. I had great ideas in my head, but I just, I couldn't. And I, I was overworking it and I needed to move on, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's like ten legs in here, so it's not even like spider-esque at all. So anyway, moving on. And then we go from that horrible page to this page. I was so proud of this. This was all watercolor. I think it turned out really good. I'm really proud of how the eye looks. The fur texture is all laying the right way. I love the feet and stuff. I, this one was really fun to do. I enjoyed the whole painting process of this. So holds a special place for me in my sketchbook because I just really like it. I tried to stay clear of colored pencils for the next couple ones and I did. This is a buffle head. Ducks are a very comfort zone animal for me because I've drawn some extremely detailed and painted and colored extremely detailed ducks for like months and months and months on end for I think four or five solid years. So um, yeah, I'm very familiar with ducks. This one was easy. Um, I did go a little bit exaggerated on the colors in the buffle head, but it's kind of got an iridescent color here. Yeah, so this was just a fun little mental break from trying anything hard. It was very familiar and very fun. Okay, and then over here we've got something I'm very proud of. Ignore the background. <laughs> but um, the main focus is the zebra. And what I'm really proud about this is there's blue and yellow for the lighting and I tried to use it in a way that it looked realistic and cohesive and so we've kind of got a blue side of the face and a yellow side um, where the light is shining a little more we have this yellow and it kind of fades into a blue into the shadows and I'm really proud of how this zebra turned out I think it turned out pretty darn good so and then over here I have a page of scrawler box ideas I think it was a video that I did the two deer in I I'll try to link it up in the eye up above and you guys, if you want to check it out, you can watch it. I think I was trying to combine both the ideas and I ended up keeping them separate, but like as a kind of series together. Um, I like this idea and I would like to revisit it, but not with those particular art supplies. So, um, but I really, I really like the composition of these two. I think they're really cool. Moving on, I am skipping a page in the middle because this has some content that I don't really want you guys to see as it was for a client. So. I don't really want to show that on camera. On this page, we have the precursor to this page, which I will talk about in a second. Um, these were just some little composition designs of which one I wanted to decide to do. And of course, I decided to go with the hardest one because I liked how it looked the best. And if I was going to do this one, I was going to go all out. So 
I have wanted to, for some for some reason, I don't know why, but kingfishers are just like an attractive bird. I love the colors. They have color contrast. They have orange and blue. And I have never drawn, painted, sketched a kingfisher. I think I didn't do it because I was intimidated. I have a whole video on this, so I will not rant too long because you guys can go watch that video if you want to see it. But anyway, I am so proud of this. I'm so happy how it turned out. I love the colors. It was all done with watercolor. I'm just beyond happy with it. And I went simple on the background um, because I wanted to really focus on the bird. And then we have the sketchbook page here. I took a break completely and totally just ditched all of my plans for Creatures Great and Small. The prompt was Otter. I had just done this and it took a lot out of me. And so I just went really cartoony with this and I think it turned out really cute. I love the little otter design. I would like to make a sticker or some sort of washi tape off of this or something one day. I think it's a really cute simplistic design and we got our little dot eyes back. It's just really cute and I like the colors on this one. For this page, I had Instagram do a poll on which one they liked. I couldn't tell whether I wanted to go with kind of like a springy vibe or a more wintry vibe. And you all pretty much unanimously liked this one. Um, this one was a hard process for me because I was trying to work on my background. I think I did this one with gouache instead of watercolor, but I do like how this turned out. The background isn't exactly as I had in my mind, but you know what? This was a lot better than the ones I've been doing, so I'm okay with that. And then um, I broke it up with a couple pages of just pure fun, low pressure, draw whatever I feel like. This is a quote that I really like. If you want to read it, you can pause the video. And then we have our fun little page here. Um, just some colored pencils and some watercolor. I love the design on these frogs. They're super cute. Um, we got a little red cardinal over here. And then this flower somehow came in from the page after it through here. I have no idea how, but it's a really cool effect. So this was a fun page. Again, another kind of simple page. I did both of these while watching movies with my family. Just felt like doodling a little bit, so. Back to the prompts, we have a spinner dolphin. Really proud of this one, cohesive color scheme, blues and yellows. I think the water turned out really well. I love the sky and the gradient. I'm really, really happy most of all with the water on this. On some of these, I just knew that the animal would take more of my time and I wanted to pay more attention on it and that's what I was working on. But with the spinner dolphin, it was pretty simplistic to paint so I spent a good amount of time on this background and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out, so. Uh, again, another simple one. We've got a magpie here. I had a lot of fun with this kind of pastel-y, rainbow-y background. There's like yellows, blues, greens, pinks, purples, and then like in the distance it fades into branches. I think this background was really fun. This is a page from a brawler box that I did and I really liked these thumbnails so I decided to tape it in my sketchbook so I didn't lose it. So I did this one. Um, when I was watching Into the Spider-Verse, the first movie, I just had my sketchbook and an ink pen and just had some fun with some kind of zentangly things. And then this is also from the same scrawler box. Um, I really liked a lot of the ideas I had and I didn't know which one to pick. Um, so I ended up keeping all of my thumbnail sketches just just because I liked them a lot. I did this one while watching another movie. Uh, tigers are really hard for me to draw. I don't know what it is about them. I think it's this like kind of fluff that comes off their faces. It's the same thing for foxes. I just have a really hard time figuring out how that looks. Um, so I can draw all sorts of wild cats, but tigers are really hard. Um, but I, I really liked this design. It took me a while to do, but this is just with a ballpoint pen and I really like how it looked. And then when I was finished, I took a uh, blue marker from the scholar box that I did these with and just colored in the background because I thought it looked kind of nice, so. And then fall comes around and this was the first day of fall um, in September, I believe. Or maybe it was just the first day of September. I don't remember. I want to say it was the first day of fall though. I only had three colors. I had brown, orange, and red. And so I just tried to make something out of it. Uh, it doesn't look amazing, but it was just a cute, fun little fall sketch. And then we have this thing right here. I am super proud of this, this is one of my favorite dog breeds. It's called a Welsh Springer Spaniel. And they are beautiful dogs, but um, this was another one of my prompts 
for the creatures great and small and this was the second to last so it was the 29th prompt and the reason why i put it at the end is because i have not drawn or painted a dog before with long hair like this with the kind of flowy hair and that really intimidated me so i put it near the end just so i could gain some confidence with watercolor and I had so much fun making this and I just did it layer by layer and I'm so proud of how this turned out. The nose looks so good, it looks real. Like, like this whole thing right here just looks so good to me. And I like the ear a lot, there's a few things that I kind of overlooked, but overall I'm so proud of how this turned out. The only thing I don't like is that eye, but I promise you that is how the reference looked that I was using. Um, you could not see the eye and it looks really weird and I probably should have just changed it a little bit but I was just so focused on making it look as close to the reference as possible that I just didn't even really bother with it but incredibly proud of this and um, I hope that I can revisit this. I might do a pet portrait of my own animals one day uh, but we'll see. We'll see if I get there. Then we have the prompt 30 for the creatures great and small which is leopard. In every sketchbook, I always try to draw one leopard and I always try to go for realism and I try to go as realistic as possible. And I do that because I wanna focus on how realistic I can make it look. I'm not necessarily going for color. I draw one in every sketchbook and I try to make it look better than my last sketchbook or how detailed can I make this look, so. Um, and then we have just another fun little simple sketchbook page with the Butterflies, I just doodled that real quick. Didn't try very hard on it. And then we have this really fun page. I love this whole spread. I was feeling really fallish. All the colors you see here are what I used to make this. And I just doodled this randomly. And this is probably one of my favorite things in this sketchbook. It's so cute and like messy. And I don't know, it just feels really fun. And it's kind of a cute illustration style. And I, I just really like this. And then I have a little bit of typography over here that was fun to do. Fun leaf page over here of just fall colors. And I did this with alcohol markers. And this is just, it's always fun to do something really simple and just enjoy the process. And then it was that time of year again for Inktober. I don't typically do the actual Inktober lists anymore. They kind of go a little bit more for that Halloween theme and I just, that's not what I like to draw. It's not my art style and I don't celebrate Halloween. So um, I did the Jess Tober from Jess Carp. I loved her prompt ideas this year. Her prompt ideas were adorable. So after doing all of the realism and watercolor improvement with my Creatures Great and Small prompts, which had taken me months to do, I decided to go really simplistic, work on my illustration style for um, Inktober. And I always plan on doing as many as possible and I always think I'm gonna do all of them and then I never end up having enough time because October is a busy time of year for me. But here's prompt one, it was, yeah, dog with a travel log. I had a little piece of paper that actually said travel log on it so I just put it like it was a journal entry. And this is a swatch page for some Dollar Ronnie inks that I got and then this was the prompt cat with a bat um, I tried to do kind of a book page or something with this one I was trying to go for like a scene rather than just a picture of some random thing I think it's okay I liked how it's all kind of this pink pastel -y vibe I do like that I think the tree designs are kind of cute this is supposed to be a pinata I don't know if any of you could tell that without me saying anything. And the cat designs are okay, but there's just something about this one that I don't like and I can't really put my finger on it. It was it was an Inktober, so I tried not to spend too much time on each Inktober every day because then I would burn out. But anyway, this was uh, Bee Having Tea. I thought this was an adorable prompt. So um, I just have little bees here. There's like, it might not show up on camera, but there's a little bubble here. And it's just got really, really light pastel colors going around the whole thing just to bring out the bumblebees a little bit. And I didn't want a plain white background. So this was just using colored pencils. I think I used Prismacolors. Uh, there's a little mushroom here in the ground and they have, they're having a little tea party on top of their mushroom. And I, I had so much fun making this one. We have an elegant elephant over here. This was with watercolor. And then I went back in with some colored pencil for line art. 
and tried to keep some of the line art colorful so there's actually some purple and blue line art on this elephant. I like the colors of this and I like the idea. I don't think the execution was exactly what I wanted to go for but again it is uh, an Inktober prompt so I didn't spend too long on it. And then we have this character design over here of Tiger Fighter, another prompt. I loved this so much. I had so much fun designing this character and I'm so proud of how it turned out. And I made a little um, Instagram reel and YouTube short off of it and I had so much fun with just adding a sound effect to it. It was just like the whole process of this picture was just awesome. I might revisit this character again, but I, I haven't thought of a name. If you guys think of a name, comment one down below. I might use it. Again, we have another prompt. This one was Bear at the Fair. Absolutely had a blast with the color scheme. Um, this is just supposed to be like a little carousel bear. Um, we got the pink little blush mark here. Very bright and pastel at the same time. And I had so much fun with this, with the little cloth and the decorations. So this one was really fun to do. And then I just colored pastel in the background. We have Wizard Wizard over here. This one I was really proud of because I didn't use a reference and I'm one of those artists that has a hard time drawing without a reference. The artists that do that without a reference, I just like, my mind is boggled that they can do that. Um, he's got his little staff with his little purple ribbon that matches his cape with the stripe on the inside. And uh, it was just, it was really fun. And I liked the colors here with the like kind of magic flowing out of his palm. and. Yeah, I just, I really like this one a lot. It was really fun to do. The next one, which was Bird Nerd. This was supposed to be a slight representation of Joy Arts, me. Uh, and I really liked the composition and layout of this whole thing. I Like, I love the flowiness of it. But what I don't like is the colors. I think I went a little too bright with the background. And I don't like how the books are all, like, uncohesive. I just don't feel like this color scheme looks very good, so I would like to redo this one day with something a little more, like, finished. I really like this idea, just don't, I just don't like how I put the colors, so um, I will definitely revisit that, though, because it was really fun. We have Kangaroo making stew over here. I uh, just went for a really kind of fun little campfire vibe, trying to get some lighting effects. It feels very bookish. Like, I feel like you got a little kid's book off of this or something. I decided to break up the rhythm and break out some acrylic paint pens, like Posca pens and some other ones, and uh, we got a little bit of the um, shimmery ones. I got some silver and gold on here. It's a raccoon on the moon. I had fun designing this little guy. He's fishing for stars. Uh, he's got one hooked over here. This texture right here took forever to get because what I ended up doing was I made the whole moon peach and then I went over top of it with purple but then like I'd take my finger and like spread it around with a paint pen and so it's kind of got this like brush look but I didn't use any brushes for it, just my fingers. And if you could feel it like I am right now, you can feel that it's kind of like textured and bumpy and then the I kind of did a similar thing for the space in the background. And then we have snail mail. I had a lot of fun just making this little stamp design with you got a little snail mailman with all of his packages strapped on and some mail over here. He's got his little carry bag and his hat. I, th I thought this one was just really cute and I liked the kind of minimalistic colors um, and it's very um, ink heavy and sketchy and I just really like how it turned out. So that one was a fun break to do after doing a bunch of really colorful illustrations. And then this is the last Jess Tober prompt I did, My Son Ice. Um, I was kind of running short on time, so I didn't really get to do any more. Um, and I like ice skating myself, big hobby of mine, and I love doing it so much. Uh, we have a temporary ice rink that comes from November to the end of January where I live. And so I just kind of took some inspiration from that. And you just got this little mouse having a grand old time on their ice rink. So that one was fun. Um, and then my birthday is in October, so I had gotten some new watercolors. I bought myself the Schmincke set. It was a limited edition set, I believe. And I haven't actually really used the Schmincke set yet. Um, I'm planning on doing that in my new sketchbook. I'm really excited to use these. I've heard wonderful things about Schmincke. They have a great reputation, and I'm excited to see what I think of them and how I kind of 
can use my watercolor style with their paint. And then my mom had also gotten me some Paul Rubens. And I really, really have liked them so far. I have used these a little more. Really happy with the Paul Rubens. Uh, and then I had also gotten some acrylic gouache, which I've been wanting to try for so incredibly long because I see them all over Instagram and YouTube and they look so fun to use and the colors look really vibrant and they are just as great as I thought they would be. So um, I just got a primary set. You really only need primaries if you're going to try something and, and they are pretty pricey, which is why I only got the primaries. Um, and then this was painted with um, the acrylic gouache later. It was an empty sketchbook page and I just came back in and put this in here around Christmas. If any of you know what movie this might be from, it's from a Christmas movie. If you know what it's from, put what movie you think it's from in the comments and I'll comment back with a little Christmas tree if you guys get it right. This is my first Paul Rubens illustration. Really enjoyed making this. The colors really went well together. And I think it was just fun to just do like a winter cardinal scene because I've wanted to paint one for a while. And, and then this is some stuff for a video that I made for Christmas. One of the first ideas was just doing a winter plant kind of page. You can do it however you want. Uh, this was the second idea I had, just a winter scene with the Christmas tree. You can put ornaments on it, you can put it in a house, whatever you wanted to do, but this was just a fun little sketchbook idea that looks really cute with minimal effort. And this was my first painting with the acrylic gouache, actually. I had some leftover paint from that tree, so I just wanted to use it up and I just made this. And um, this pink paint was oft also leftover paint and once it dries, you can't use it. So I just decided to put a little candle here and we got some pine cones. This was just kind of a leftover page. And then we have our final idea for the Christmas sketchbook idea, which was making your own ornaments and um, just designing your own ornaments. And I thought this was really fun. This is using those Dollar Ronnie uh, inks. I use that for the base of all of these. And this red is just so beautiful. I love this red. I really like this design for this ornament and this ornament. I think if I decide to paint my own ornaments one year, I'm actually going to try one of these designs because I had so much fun with them and I really like them. This one's kind of like a folk art style. And then this one was a botanical style and I just, I really, really enjoyed looking at them. So I might actually have to make those into real ornaments. And then here we have just like a little Christmas dress outfit idea. I just felt like drawing a person, which is very rare for me. I painted the background in because I was really struggling with the background. So you can't actually see the mess up stuff behind here, but there was some re really odd things going on in this background. And I was trying to make it look like kind of like a magazine page or like a poster or something. And to me, <laughs> it kind of looks like a Macy's ad. So maybe I accomplished that. I wasn't going for that, but because of the red stars, it makes it feel like a Macy's ad to me. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. On one of the last days of the year, I just got the rest of those pins out and my blue marker from that scrawler box from the Faber-Castell pins that I love so much unfortunately died on me so um, I just have some cross hatching here but this was the most random sketch ever I was literally sitting in a hallway with my sister and I was like what should I draw and she said a pineapple and I was like I don't want to draw a pineapple but I drew a pineapple anyway and I really liked how it turned out like it's so messy and sketchy and I love it I I love it and I went back in um, with the color and just added like some hint of color and I think it turned out looking really cool So I really like this page. I decided to draw another page and I hate this page I have nothing more to say about it. I don't like it and I will never look at it ever again <laughs> And then we have a hymn written down here called come behold the wondrous mystery The lyrics to this song are beautiful and I love this song so much. I think it's beautifully written um, so I like to sometimes write things that inspire me or quotes or song lyrics um, in my sketchbook just when I'm going through. So that was um, the last day of the year that I wrote that in there. Okay, 2024. I just put a video out about this one so you guys might have already seen this video, but this is the uh, designs I decided to go with for this sketch right here. Um, I was trying to figure out color schemes. I really like these colors here. This is with colored pencil. So we just have it going from like a 
light orange all the way to a darker orange into almost a red. And then I think that purple really helped it stick out. We've got this nice green in the background. So it's basically secondary colors. And I was also trying to experiment with a new color scheme because I feel like I stick to similar colors a lot. One of my goals for 2024 is trying new color schemes out, so. And then we have a bear that I did. I painted a whole page black. I kind of wanted to go for a chalkboard look and I thought this looked so cute. I love this little guy. I didn't really think about this at the time, but I literally just doodled like these random shapes and I'm like, oh, this kind of looks like a basset hound or a beagle or something. So I have a little beagle named Buddy and then uh, we have a cat named Maisie. Um, so I just put them in here as a little cameo. Coming into the new year, I was like, I was really wanting to finish the sketchbook by the end of January. So I decided to just go low pressure and just have fun and do whatever comes to mind. And so I was going through Pinterest and I just saw um, like a little blue fish or something and it just made me think of this. So I did a little pattern here. And then I had my alcohol markers out and I just did a little fun page here with some botanicals and some color schemes and stuff. Nothing in particular here, but it was fun. Um, and then I have a sunset. I was trying to go a little more abstract with the shapes and trying out a new color scheme where I only use pretty much two colors. We got orange and blue and then I had a little bit of pink in here. There's only a few things I would change about it, but it, it's a cool idea. It's not something that I would usually do. Uh, again, trying to work on some 2024 art goals of working on landscapes and color schemes at the same time. I don't think I quite accomplished what I was going for, but it's still a fun page. And then for this one, I have a really fun design. I had so much fun making this. I'm pretty sure I was watching a movie when I was making this one with my family. And um, I remember drawing this bird design and really liking it. And then I just kind of doodled the rest of it. It kind of just came out. I didn't really plan any of it, it just kind of happened. And again, working on the color schemes here, trying to go with a very nature inspired one, but also a very kind of similar toned one. And I think it turned out really good. I got a lot of compliments on this and I was not expecting that. So um, I was just uh, really happy with this one. I'm glad people liked it. And then we come to the end, the end of my sketchbook here. Again, working on those uh, color schemes, went with some really out there colors, going with this very neon pink, um, and then this like really odd orangish pink color for the leaves was a little bit out there for me, but I did really end up loving the colors of this. I think it's a fun, cute way of doing it, and it brought in some things that I like, so I love typography or hand lettering, and then I love doing some florals, botanical things. And I love color, so it brought in a bunch of things that I like at the end of my sketchbook. And I always try to end my sketchbook with something I'm either trying to work on or something that I learned. And uh, so I thought this was a really fun page and it was really relaxing to paint. It was really low pressure. For the back here, I just have a little sticker that I outlined and put some little stars. I guess symbolizing me ending the journey of this sketchbook and starting a new one. So. There we are. That is my sketchbook for March 2023 to January 2024. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you think a friend or someone you know would like to watch this, go ahead and share the video. Um, I am incredibly grateful for all of the people that have encouraged me and subscribe to my channel this year. I feel incredibly supported for sure. I can't wait to see what I will make in my next sketchbook. I'm really excited and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Bye everybody and happy creating.